that the Greens are going to stand up, as Jennifer says, and, and do the right thing here? I mean, you also called for the upper end of this target, and we heard um, your chair person today, Pauline O'Reilly, saying that she wouldn't stand over you know, a target in agriculture that was at the lower end of the scale, would you? Well, it's no secret that we've been pushing as hard as we can in these talks. And but how much of a red line issue? There's one thing to be pushing, there's another thing to say, yes, look, we'll be willing to compromise red in, line, in the middle. Red line is great copy and great content from a media perspective, but I think it, it brings more heat than light to the debate. What we're anxious to get across the line is a cogent and ambitious climate plan that doesn't just look at agriculture in and of itself. There are yeah. six sectors that need to make tra uh, emissions reductions targets. That together has to add to that 51% reduction by 2030. So, the, so the, to bring the... in language and, and, as I say, to, to kind of ratchet up the heat within the debate, I don't think that is helpful. But I think I'm very aware that there are farmers at home who are, to, who are watching this yeah, and might be in after yeah, throwing the silence. To be fair, and to be fair Mark, kind of it's not the media ratcheting up the heat. It was Pauline O'Reilly, the Green Party senator and chairperson today. It was she who said I wouldn't be able to stand over. In, in an interview, yeah, but I would say... Well, she said it. She I wasn't forced to say it. I don't find that useful. I don't, I don't think, as I say, it makes good copy for tomorrow's okay, newspaper. OK, but would you stand over it? Because the Greens were voted in on these issues. It was the main issue for the Green Party. What will you stand over? Well, we have to push for climate targets across across our economy and across our society. OK, but and Jennifer's given me a very clear position. You're the Green Party, you're in mm -hmm. government, and you can't give me where your compromise is this evening or what no, figure is OK because, by you. Because those talks are ongoing. Those negotiations, I, I would don't do negotiations on there. I'm not part of those neg negotiations and those talks that are the, happening. The, the rumour today was that the agreement looks like it'll be around 25 or 26. Is that OK for you I as a no Green Party member? I have no information on what's happening within that. I, you know, that, that's, I'm not on the You don't need to be part, with all due respect, talks. Mark, you don't need to be part what, of the talks I need to, to see, give a position on that. What I need to see is a cogent and coherent plan across all of society and across all of our economy that's going to add up to that 51% by 2030, which is written into the Climate Act. And, and that, is, that is the real goal that we're working towards. Uh, the other sectors, have they agreed their targets at this point? They, they or can have... they agree their targets at this point until we've agreed agriculture? Yes, yeah, so all of the pieces have to fit together. But there has been broad agreement on the other sectoral targets. They're extremely ambitious, as John has set out. So agriculture has been acknowledged to be a special case. That's absolutely... in, in when the Climate Change Advisory Council set those ranges between 22 and 30 per cent, that was an acknowledgement of agriculture's the, special position. Are the but Green all Party, of these have to hang together to, to arrive at that 51 per cent by 2030. Yeah. Are the Green Party concerned, Mark, because we heard all the rural backbenchers out this week uh, and you could hear the concern in their voice, you know, that they were representing their constituents and that they might be in trouble if they weren't heard on the airwaves uh, representing their constituents, um, their rural constituents when it comes to these talks. Are the Green Party concerned that you too will be punished uh, in the, the next election if you don't manage to push this through, given the fact that this was such a core part of a Green Party policy? I can tell you these are my constituents as well. I'm from Waterford. It's, it, West Waterford is one of the most intensive dairying areas. I know many farmers who have borrowed heavily uh, I know they might have voted for you policy. with all due respect in but the last still my election. I'm talking about Green Party they're voters. They're still my constituents and I, I represent my constituents whether they voted for me or not. But absolutely my core Green Party vote put me where I am for climate action. This has been a government that has moved on climate action like no other previous government. We've introduced the Climate Act. We've brought in planning to, to, to unlock offshore wind. Would you accept that, Jennifer? We have a massive Jennifer? retrofitting programme. There's been a lot of action mm -hmm. and agreeing these sectoral ceilings and then starting to put them into place. Would you say there's the been step. a lot of action, no. Jennifer? No, I think, I think the, the foundational stones as such, putting by uh, bringing in the Climate Act, that was very important. However, I don't think the action is there to match it. Um, I, think, I think each sector is going to find it very difficult to meet the targets. Um, I think the Green Party are good at getting the, the, the act in and getting the plans and policies in, but I and think the, de the, huge, deliver huge yeah, but the deliverability just isn't there. I mean, there's a 28-month a, a waiting list, list uh, for um, retrofitting. retrofitting. Uh, EV charging points aren't being rolled out. Uh, solar He's panels been aren't being rolled out. Week. Not a single target. Not a single Planning target. Exemptions on the solar panels. Not, but but you're two and a half that's years been, in. That's been done. But there, these not are a done. single target mark has been met. Um, and you know when when you're we're, we're talking later on about the you know cost of living and elderly people. When you have people who are really yeah. struggling to heat their homes, and All simple right. things like the retrofitting isn't being done. That's not a 
acceptable. So it is about getting the foundational pieces in, the legislation in, but it's also about making sure that the deliverability of it happens, All right. and that isn't can the case at the moment. Can you do those actions without those foundation pieces, Jennifer? All right, you, you have to get them done. No, no, we you actually can't.